how I was able to achieve my financial goals, such as increasing my net worth by 42% in just one year, or paying off $60,000 of debt in two years, while not even having a job at some point. Well, budgeting is a simple yet effective strategy that I was able to use to achieve my financial goals. I budgeted where every single dollar went, so that way I was able to put some towards debt or building my net worth. And I'm gonna show you the eight simple strategies to budgeting so that you can also reach your financial goals. I'm Shane of The Well Vibe, and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth. When you hear the word budgeting, how do you feel? Maybe it makes you feel a little frustrated, or brings up anxiety, or you feel like you have a loss of control over your money. Well, budgeting should actually make you feel the exact opposite way. And if you've ever felt like you can't look at your bank account, or if you felt a little anxiety about making a purchase, well, I have definitely been there and hit the like button if you can relate. I have actually avoided looking at my bank account or if I had to log into my bank account for some reason, I would cover parts of the screen just so I didn't have to see the amount of damage that I've created. And if you've ever felt like that, you know that you have actually lost control of your money. So with budgeting, I was able to regain control and regain confidence over money related issues. So I'm gonna show you the eight simple steps that you can take now to regain the freedom, the confidence, and control over your money. The first simple step towards budgeting is developing your why and then a goal that supports your why. So you have to have a why, a reason that motivates you to stick to your budget and to reach financial goals. So that could be a myriad of things. That could be that you wanna have you know, a better life. You wanna have a better life for your family, your kids, you know, and everyone else that you're with. Or maybe you want to have a business. You have to figure out what your why is. And then once you have a why, then you can set goals, financial goals, that support that why. So when you're coming up with your financial goals, I highly advise that you use the SMART method. And if you want to learn more about the SMART method for setting financial goals, you can check out this video right here. And it's gonna teach you exactly about the SMART method, which is to create specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound goals. And it's really important that you set these goals so that way you can see what progress that you're making. Now, a lot of people like to set their financial goals at the beginning of the year, but you definitely don't have to wait until January 1st to set financial goals. You can reset your financial goals in the middle of the year. You can set your goals at any point. One of my good friends in personal finance, she actually has this really intuitive idea about how to figure out your why and your goals related to budgeting. She calls it your bucket list budgeting. And I think it's so brilliant. So there are things that you want to do in life. There are things you want to accomplish. And those are the things that you put on your bucket list. And then you can prioritize the things on your bucket list and then set goals around that that will allow you to achieve the things that you really want to, to do in life. So if you're interested in learning more about the bucket list budgeting method, you'll wanna check out the link down in the description box so that you can learn all about it. Cause it is, I think it's really intuitive and really genius that she even thought about this. And it might make you feel a lot more comfortable about budgeting to begin with. After you've developed your why and you set your goals, you wanna have an audit of your spending because many times we don't realize that we're spending in ways that don't support our why or our goals. So you wanna go and track your spending for the last three to six months. Go into your bank account. I know it's gonna make you feel a little anxiety, but just do it. It's going to be super eye-opening and really helpful to you in order to move you towards your financial goals. So go into your bank account, pull your statements from the past three to six months, and then categorize them. Look at what you've been spending money on, like what actual items, the stores that you've been spending at, and you know what categories you've been spending at, and then see if those spending categories or those spending behaviors actually match and support the why and the goals that you've set. 
because I'm going to tell you right now, oftentimes they don't because I personally did this and I realized that I was spending way too much money on Amazon and at Target and in categories where I was like, what, why do you spend so much money in these areas? And so that was the first eye-opening step and it allowed me to think about, you know, I'm, I don't really have control of, over my money and I want to do things differently. And if you want to see how you should track and audit your spending, check out this video right here. A critical component of any budget is your income. In order to plan where you want your money to go, you first need to have the money. So a lot of people actually don't know how much money they make and I used to question how could that even be possible but there are a number of reasons why that might happen. One, you might be paid on a salary. So for example, if you are have a salary of $50,000 and then after taxes, you actually don't take home that money but a lot of people would think that they actually have $50,000 to work with when in reality it's much less. And then you have situations where a spouse is actually the manager of the money or an executor is the manager of the money. So there are a number of reasons why people don't know how much money they're making, but you need to figure out how much money you have coming in. So what I suggest is that you write down all of your sources of income and kudos to you if you have multiple sources of income because I always suggest that. So write down all your sources of income, how much money you are getting from each source and then how frequently you are getting that money. And then once you have that landscape laid out, you will be able to make some important decisions. First, you'll know how much money you are making and then you'll be able to know how you should be budgeting. So from that table that you create, you'll be able to see where the bulk of your income is coming and how often. So based off of that, you can determine whether you're going to do a monthly, a bi-weekly, a weekly, or any other type of budget. And so for me, when I was getting paid on a monthly basis, I decided that I needed to, needed to do a monthly budget. But then when I moved to a situation where I was getting paid bi-weekly, I decided to do a bi-weekly budget because that's where the bulk of my money was coming from and I needed to make moves around that. So it's really important that you get a good idea of your income, how much it is, where it's coming from, and how often it is coming. Next, you want to determine your expenses. And if you've done the audit of your budget, you have a good idea of some of your expenses. But then there are some things that you might have missed. And so what I suggest is that you actually do an annual budget to start off with. And you'll want to check out this video right here where I talk about annual budgeting. But you'll want to think about for the entire year, what are all your expenses that come up? And sometimes there are regular expenses that you have to pay every single month, but then there are irregular expenses that come up, you know, every six months or every quarter or something like that. You want to have all of that laid out so that way you are accounting for them and that way you can make a strategic plan around how to deal with those expenses. So sit down and think about for the entire year what all of your expenses are. You also want to consider major activities or events that will come up in the year. For example, are you going to be in someone's wedding or are you actually going to get married? Are you going to have to have surgery? Will you have to go on a vacation or do a multitude of other things? You want to write that down on your expense list. Once you know your income and you've laid out all of your expenses, it is time to create your budget and customize it in a way that's going to allow you to meet your financial goals. So one of the things that I like to do when I start out with budgeting is to start with some guidelines. And one of the guidelines that I used was from a book by Peter Dunn and he had some guidelines for how much money you should spend in certain categories like your housing, your food, transportation, and things like that. And there are other guidelines out there that you can use too, but find one that really meets your needs for the most part. And then you're going to customize it later. So, but start with those guidelines. And then you want to make sure that a few things are covered in your budget. For example, you want to make sure that taxes are covered in your budget because if you, your income is not pre-tax, that's something that you need to make sure that you're saving for because it gets a lot of people in trouble and they end up being a little bit surprised by the amount of money they have to pay in taxes. So make sure taxes are in your budget if you need to pay taxes out of pocket. Then you want to make sure that other areas are covered, like your four walls, so your housing, your transportation, utilities, and things like that are paid first in your budget. 
And that's something that Dave Ramsey talks about. And I really agree with making sure that those necessities are definitely covered because that is a priority. And then you want to consider your debts. If you have any debt, this is something that you want to prioritize because what happens with debt is that somebody else is actually controlling your money. When you get your paycheck, they're telling you already that the money needs to go out to them. So they have a hold on your money and you don't have control over your money. So a way to regain control of your money is actually paying off your debt. So that way you have the ability to free up money to do the things that you actually want to do. Then you want to consider saving and investing if you have any extra money. And then last, you want to think about how to spend in a way that one meets your financial goals and then two brings you joy. Yes, I did say to have at least one thing in your budget that brings you joy. It is super important, although I know it sounds a little Marie Kondo-ish, but it's something that you definitely want to have in your budget because budgeting can get a little difficult. And if you don't have that at least one thing that's going to bring you joy, you're going to want to give it up completely. And that's not what we want to have because remember I said, if you don't have a budget, then you don't have control over your money. So make sure that you have at least one thing in your budget that brings you joy. And then over time, as you're able to meet your financial goals, then you're able to bring in more things that bring you joy. After you have a first draft of your budget, you might realize that you are not on track towards meeting your financial goals. And that's fine because we're going to customize a little bit more. And there are a few ways that you can customize your budget. The first thing that you want to do is you want to eliminate any categories or line items on the budget that are not applicable towards you or not important to you that will not allow you to meet your financial goals. So eliminate anything like maybe movie tickets or concerts or anything like that that actually might not be something that's important to you. Then after that, you want to look at your fixed and variable expenses and look for opportunities to cut. And typically your variable expenses are where you have the most opportunity to cut. So for example, if you've used a standard or guidelines for your budget, you might realize that they're saying you can spend 12% of your income on food. And that might equate to $600 a month on food for one person. And that might be a little bit too much. Or maybe when you did your auditing of your budget, you realize that you spend $600 a month on food, but you don't feel comfortable about that. Well, you can actually drop down your expenses to maybe like $200 or $300 a month, freeing up more money to reach your financial goals. Then you can actually look at your fixed expenses. So your fixed expenses are things like your housing, your transportation, things like that. And those are also opportunities where you can reduce your expenses. Maybe you can consider moving to somewhere that's a little less expensive or changing cars, selling your car, or even getting lower rates on your insurance. And those are ways that you can bring in more opportunities for your money that will allow you to reach your financial goals. Having a budget is simply not enough. You must have a spending strategy that complements your budget and allows you to maintain the integrity of it while reaching your financial goals. Because without a spending strategy, the budget just does not work. So there are a few spending strategies that I can share with you. And my first tip is to automate. You want to automate as much as you can. So if you are trying to pay off debt, you want to make sure that you are automating those debt payments. Same thing with savings and investments. And even with your bills, you want to make sure that everything that you can is automated because it doesn't rely on you remembering or your own behaviors because there's opportunity for failure if you rely on yourself. But if something is automated, you can rest assured that it's going to happen. So I highly suggest that you automate as much as you possibly can. The envelope system is another awesome spending strategy. You can either use the cash envelope system, which you can learn more about here, or you can use a digital version. And I absolutely love the digital way because I love anything that's digitized and automated. But essentially the envelope system allows you to put aside money for specific spending categories. And that way you know what your limits are that you previously set in your budget for spending in that category. So for example, if you set aside $200 to be spent on groceries, you will have an envelope or a physical envelope or you'll have a digital envelope where you will spend that money from. And you'll be able to track 
how much more money you have available to you to spend from that category. So it will keep you accountable for sure. And if you're interested in checking out the digital form of envelope systems, you can check out a few different resources because there's tons of apps available. But I highly recommend that you check out Chime, Capital, and then there are even banks like Simple Bank and Capital One 360 that allow you to set up envelopes, digital envelopes in their bank system. And I highly recommend that you check out any one of these because you will love a digital envelope system. And there are different offers that they'll give you for these different apps or banks. So check out the one that works best for you down in the description box. Another spending tip is to do separate transactions. So this might be a pain, but when I tell you it's super helpful, it is. So for example, you might have a category for clothing in your budget, and then another category for food, and then another one for household products, right? And then you have stores like Target, where you can go into Target and buy literally everything from all three of those categories. But how will you know how much money you actually spent from each respective category if you do one transaction? So I find it best to separate the transactions. So all of the clothing items that I bought, I put in one transaction. All the household items in another. And then a last transaction for any food things that I purchased. And that allows me to stay on track of the spending that I'm doing for each category in my budget. And then similarly, you might also want to set up your budget in a way that you are putting a category based off of a store. So if you do a lot of spending at a store like Target, you might not wanna do all those separate transactions. You might just wanna have a budget alone for Target. And that will allow you to stay within your spending strategy for that store and then you won't overspend and buy certain things. The flip side of a spending strategy is a saving strategy and you're definitely going to want to have a saving strategy and you're always going to be saving for something whether you're in debt or not in debt you always have something to save for. So my suggestion and the thing that I love to do is have sinking funds and sinking funds are really similar to envelopes. You're just putting aside money for a goal and you're saving that money in an envelope or in an account or something else that allows you to you know build it up for that specific purpose if you want to learn more about sinking funds check out this video right here but you must have a saving strategy because without a strategy you're gonna fail with your budget set and your spending and saving strategies in place I am sure that you are well on your way towards meeting your financial goals but I highly suggest that you track everything just to ensure that you are. And there are a few different ways that you can track your personal finances. You can do it the old fashioned way with pen and paper in a planner, or you can have a digital planner or do it in Excel or numbers or even Google Sheets. And then you can also use a software or an app to track everything. And I highly recommend that you check out Personal Capital because it's gonna give you tracking for everything, your net worth, your budget and everything related to your personal finances but you want to make sure that no matter what what method you choose that you are tracking your personal finances i gave you eight simple steps that will allow you to regain your freedom your confidence and your control over your money if you want to check out any of the videos that i mentioned in this video you'll want to check out this playlist here and remember i have everything down in the description box i hope that you're subscribed so that i can see you in the next video